The NFL draft now just 15 days away. Mel Kiper Jr. has released his final mock before the real thing. This is the 4.0, the entire two rounds of this mock draft available on ESPN Plus. So you can check it out there. It's time to ask Mel some of our own burning mock draft questions, decisions. Dan, you get to start us off. You go first. Mel, the Detroit Lions have the second and 32nd pick in the NFL draft. If they don't take a quarterback at number two, what team do you think jumps them back into the first round above 32 to take a quarterback? And if what team, what quarterback? Dan, yeah, could be Seattle and Atlanta at 40 and 43. The Seattle like Drew Locke enough to keep moving forward with him, at least for a year. Atlanta with Marcus Mariota, we'll see about that. And then you think about Desmond Ritter. Where is Desmond Ritter going to go? 20 to Pittsburgh, keep hearing Mike Tomlin, dual threat quarterback. Does one of those teams, Seattle, Atlanta, trade in to get Desmond Ritter? Think about next year's draft. You got Bryce Young, Alabama, mm -hmm. C.J. Stroud, Ohio State, Anthony Richardson, Florida, all elite, potentially elite quarterbacks. Do you just want to wait and go with Locke and go with Mariota and see what happens rather than take a quarterback you may not be as high on as maybe the guys next year? Is it me? Is it me? <laughs> Sometimes I just like to see how long it takes you guys to figure it out. But go ahead, Key. What do you got? Mel, let me ask you this. Kyle Hamilton was as high as two before. Now he drops all the way down to 11. How did that happen? 40 time key this process of the draft was in February it'd be a little different now he was coming off of a knee in late October but you, you run slower than expected in the 40 and you're a guy who makes plays all over the field you show range you show all that vertical uh, you talk about the ability to go all over the field tremendous player but that's the tape then the workout how do you combine the two does the process hurt a player to me Kyle Hamilton a heck of a player you don't want to drop him too far the, I think the lowest is 11 uh, a heck of a Player. But then again, that's where you talk about computer numbers, the 40 yard dash times, Kate. Ultimately, they can land a player probably a little later than they should, but allow maybe Kyle Hamilton to become a steal in this draft. Is it that now we look at it, you mentioned February after the season, it goes a little bit higher, but now the draft is in April. Is it that the general managers, the decision makers, the head coaches finally got a chance to sit down, watch film, their season is over? They can now put their eyeballs on a guy that I think is still the top safety in the draft because he can go from sideline to sideline. I don't need a safety to run 4-3 to be able to do that. Um, he plays fast, and that's the most important thing, Key, with the pads on, how does he play? I think when you see the 4-6, you say, wow, I didn't see that. It's a red flag to some. Daxton Hill from Michigan is right there with him in terms of the second safety, but Kyle Hamilton could have been, when you think back just a couple months before the fourth, maybe the second pick, third pick, fourth pick overall, and you think about the Jets at 10, you got Washington at 11, you got to believe he goes there, but always, when we look at the draft past history, it tells us that when there's an overreaction to a 40, a lot of the time the player turns out to be better than where he was drafted. So this will present value if Kyle Hamilton does drop down that far. 100%. We're talking to the combine. Kyle Hamilton could be the best player in this draft. All right, Jeff, it's your, it's your time to ask a question here. Go ahead. All right, Mel, so the Chiefs picking 29th and 30th in the first round. I see you've got them going defense both times, waiting until the second round to go wide receiver. Do you envision any scenario where the Chiefs could go after a wide receiver in the first round or maybe even couple those picks to trade up and get a receiver earlier in the first round? Jeff, they could, and that's the Jamison Williams talk. The Kansas City will go up and get Jamison Williams or go up and get Chris Olave or maybe go way up and get a Garrett Wilson, knowing what a need that is. But they have Juju Smith-Schuster, Valdez Scanling coming in. They have defensive needs. Let's face it. They are a team couldn't stop anybody. Josh Allen would have still been scoring. So, again, you think about Carl Loftus was already mentioned from Purdue, Andrew Booth Jr., corner Clemson, and then get receivers like Sky Moore, Western Michigan, or Jalen Tolbert from South Alabama. You get a guy who's explosive. Great yak in Sky Moore. Then you get the length in Jalen Tolbert. Averaged about 17, 18 yards a catch over the last three years. So you get a combination of guys there with Moore and Tolbert. But you'll wait, Jeff, until round two. Fill those defensive needs in the first round. All right, let's my turn now. Uh, let's get to Sauce Gardner as I finally get my chance to ask Mel. He makes the leap all the way up to number two. And, and I get it, Mel. He's a great prospect. But this is a team, the Lions, they, do they really need to, to draft this guy, another cornerback? Just give me the thought process there on putting Sauce Gardner all the way at two. 
through the process that Key and I were just talking about, Laura, he's been the cleanest. He's done everything right. He's checked every box. And he's a corner in a division that still has Aaron Rodgers still playing great football. You think about where the Lions are defensively. I gave them Sauce Gardner. I gave them Lewis Seen, the outstanding safety out of Georgia. And then David Ojabo, the great pass rusher. Don't get Hutchinson. You get his teammate who's got great upside. Granted, you may have to wait like Jamison Williams. Wait for Ojabo in October, November coming off the Achilles. So they go defense heavy the Lions do. And historically bad defense would get a heck of a lot better better with Sauce Gardner locking down and being that shutdown corner that they so desperately need. If Jeff Okuda ever comes around, then mm. you got something going there. Like I said, with Aaron Rodgers and all the great quarterbacks in the ASC and all the quarterbacks that are coming into the draft, uh, you got to have the cornerback play, and Sauce has it all. And that's the only reason Derek Stingley Jr. is the second corner, because Sauce has been, so, been so, done so great through the process and played so phenomenally well at Cincinnati with nine career receptions. It took a great corner to hold, hold off Derek Stingley Jr. That's why Sauce is up there in the stratosphere sphere of this draft. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.